We're on a mission from God. And now for something completely different. Good morning and welcome. I am Pastor Matt Youngblood Clark from Ascension Lutheran Church in South St. Louis. And I'm, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Is it my turn? It's your turn, John. <laughs> okay. I know you're playing with allergies bothering you. <laughs> That's and, right. You know, I'm Pastor Jolly John Rakumski. I come from Trinity in Darmstadt, Illinois, and St. Paul's in New Athens, Illinois. And it got anything funny today, Matt? Got anything funny? You know, because we're kind of billed as the we we put the fun in the fun in the fun amount. That That's what I hear. Tagline. Anything funny today? You're the Matt? funny one. I I don't. Hey, have what's a whole that? Lot of funny what kind stuff? of crack is that? I'm the funny one. <laughs> What do you mean, funny? Funny in what sense? Huh? <laughs> funny like a clown? Is that what you mean? Uh, no, I think no. Yeah, 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 like a clown. Like, like a clown. It's, okay. not, the, it's not, the, <laughs> not the funny smell sense. No, not at all. Not at all, John. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, you'd think after not doing a lot of jokes for a while for a minute, we'd have a bunch. But, uh, all right, so here's one. Here's one. Maybe you like okay, this one, ahead. Matt. It's a knock-knock. And, you know, it's hard to find quality knock-knock jokes. <laughs> no, seriously, because you get, oh, like, sorry, knock-knock. Who's there? Old lady. Old lady who? I didn't know you could yodel. See, that's the kind of stuff you get. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the kind of good, stuff yeah. you get. Yeah. No, that's not good. No, no, we don't want that. That's old. Well, you have, you have a higher quality, higher quality. Well, and it's hard to get. Show? It's hard to get. Well, okay. Let me, I'll just show the one that I came across. Knock, knock. Who's there? Little girl. Little girl who? Little girl who's too short to ring the doorbell. <laughs> that is a good one. Isn't that, isn't, that's a good one, isn't it? That is a Too good one. short to yeah. ring the doorbell. That's pretty good. All right, well, that's all you're getting. I'm sorry if you <laughs> if you tuned in early I, to I, get I'm, more. I've got one, okay. Oh, all right, all right. 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 So, here we go. My you get them from your father-in-law. I think I got this one from yeah, my father-in-law. Yeah, okay, in -law, yeah. So. The father-in-laws are good for this. Yeah. It, it, it's a father thing, yeah. and we hand them down then to our children, and they will hand them to their grandchildren someday. Look at that. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Uh, so what, what does a, a pig with three eyes sound like? <laughs> <laughs> the premise. We don't even need a joke. Just the pre All right. What does a pig with three eyes sound like? Pig. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, three eyes. That is hilarious. It's about as, that is, it's about a, as good as your father-in-law's jokes. That, that's that's <laughs> Well, thank you. And your father-in-law's name is? Bill. Bill, Bill thank Thanks, you, Bill. Bill. Thank you for saving yeah. the show. You saved the we show. We were really... Wow. All right. <laughs> say it one more time. Pig with three eyes. How do you say it? Pig. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's about as good as it Quick, gets. Quick, hit the button. Holy cow. Yeah, no, oh, wait, get no, the no, other no, one. Get the other one. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. There All it right. is. All right, now. There's no time for foolishness. Okay. Um, so we're doing a theme. We're doing it. We don't do this. People enjoy this. This is maybe the last theme episode you get for years. Uh, and, the, and the theme is the impact of the resurrection. And last week we had the impact in the Old Testament. You had this passage from Ezekiel. And, and you would have thought it was just talking about the Israelites being restored uh, to Jerusalem. Uh, but we realize, oh, it's so much so more. So much more. Yeah, that it's actually not just about figuratively graves being open, but literal graves will be open. And, and as I go by my wife's grave there, uh, and the and the graves of my father and the graves of the others that I love. It is so fun to think that someday they're going to be open and I'm going to get to see them again. Isn't that not the cool thing about being Christians? Think about the people we loved and cared for that are no longer here and knowing someday we're going to get to see them again. Yeah. I think that is awesome. That confidence. Isn't that fantastic that we're going to be this... You know, sometimes the some of the prayers in the funeral service talk about this happy reunion in heaven. Oh, you know, yeah. This idea yeah. that we'll be reunited with those who have gone before us and... It's like a big family reunion. And if, it, it is family, right? Brothers and sisters in Christ yep. reunited uh, together in, with the Lord. And, and so much better than the, the, the unity we had here on earth. It's just, yeah, see, that's the thing. All, all the things that might have disturbed us, that, yes. you know, we got a little irritated at people and kind of like, don't you have to go now? You know, because we do that, you know. Uh, and to know that there'll no be, it'll just all be, like you say, just feelings of love and joy and being together and no impatience and, and all of that yeah. anger. Um, now, you, however, pointed out that the resurrection not only impacted the Old Testament, but it impacts the, the New Testament and the New Testament. 
Testament church. And yes. where did you want to go for that? Well, man? we're going to look in Acts chapter 4. Okay. We're going to begin, look begin at verse 32. And the, really, what I want to look at is, in our churches, we still have those white pyramids upright. And oh, yeah. It's still the season of Easter. But, you know, I think oftentimes we think, uh, you know, Easter has come and gone. Yeah. Uh, because we have the big celebration on Easter Sunday. We have the, we have the lilies. Uh, we have choirs uh, sing, special Sunday choir school music. kids oh, participate. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We have the, the youth group does a breakfast in the fellowship hall downstairs. And the pews are full. And then we look around and, well, you know, there's no special breakfast. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're lucky to have a coffee, a coffee brewing even. And then, you know, the pews aren't quite as full as they were Easter Sunday. And I think that kind of feels like that at home, too, that, that Easter's kind of come and gone. You know, we, we've we got some leftovers, still eating some ham sandwiches, maybe, from uh, <laughs> the Easter dinner. Uh, but it, it's come and gone. But but the point is, and I think that the, what's so important here in the, the book of Acts is that uh, Easter has come. And that's right. Yeah. You know, Jesus rose from the dead, but Easter's not gone. There you go. And there you go. Easter's never ever gone uh, this idea that we live in this present reality of easter so you know you get out there uh, easter sunday and even the weeks after and what do we say we say christ is risen and then we say he is risen, risen indeed, indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. right beautiful um you know it, it's subtle but we don't say christ was risen oh right? that's a good point uh, yeah. christ was risen indeed uh no it's christ is risen is this present reality that on East, that very first Easter, Christ rose from the dead, and he still is risen. Yeah. He still lives. He still reigns. And like we started off with, and, and you made note to, one day he's going to return, still risen, still alive, to, to open up those graves, uh, to raise the dead. You know, that that uh, it's funny you're talking about some of the language of the liturgy and of the church. Uh, for some reason this year, that, that closing phrase, who lives and reigns, you know, the prayers uh, uh, with the Holy Spirit and, and all that. Yes. And I thought, oh, that's right. Yeah, he lives. He that's lives. Right. Like you say, it's not a past thing. It, it's going on right now. He's still alive. Yeah. And so, you know, if that wasn't true, then why, why even bother going to church? Why even bother having wrestling with the basics? If, if he is many dead people or ask, was alive. Many people do say that. <laughs> No, even apart anyway. from that, why even have a wrestling with the basics? <laughs> but you're right. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's a present reality. He is alive, and that makes all the difference, right? Uh, so when we gather together for worship, he's there with us. Where we're gathered in his name, he's there present in the word. He's present there in the sacrament. Uh, he's present with us, not just in worship, though, yep. right? But he's present with us every day of our lives. That's even right. To the very Wherever end you of the are. age, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so what a wonderful blessing that is. So I, I think here in the book of Acts, we see that present reality of the resurrection at work in the life of the early church. So this is after the resurrection, after Jesus' ascension, after the day of Pentecost. Here's a description that we have of, of what the church does, what the church is like. And I think we can make some applications to the church today, too. Okay. Okay. So living in that present reality of Easter, how does that shape us? Because it should. It should. Jesus being alive, a living Savior, should change us, right? Yeah. Um, so so let's read about this. Uh, so Acts chapter 4, uh, about verse 32. Just okay. Let's just do verse 32. All right. Uh, now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. What? So so we're supposed to be communists? Is that yeah, what you're... I, I you, young, you young whippersnapper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, uh, no, so what not, is all that about? We're not yeah. commies, no. Well, the beautiful thing is here... Uh, who is, is... Is anyone mandating that they do this? The government no. or anyone else? No, no that's the thing. No. Nope. I mean, it is of their... It's it's their choice to do this, right? It's it's because they've been shaped, changed by the resurrection. Because and they the were point. one heart and soul. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that a beautiful description? One heart, one soul... Uh, they had everything in common. I think it's a beautiful picture. You know, it, it wasn't this attitude of what's mine is mine. Not at all. But instead, each one looked out for for their neighbor. Uh, they cared about their neighbor. They cared about their brother and their sister in Christ. And that, that really is a beautiful thing. Um, so they have this idea of, of community. Um, and, and that's wonderful. Let, let's let's keep reading. Uh, okay, well, not, before we leave that, okay, though, because now so you've kind of helped me understand that the emphasis in that text isn't that they were communists. That they had no, everything I, in common. That's probably pretty safe to say. <laughs> okay. But, but the emphasis is that they were of one heart and soul. Yeah. Which, which resulted in, oh, you need something? Well, well, here, I've got something. I can help you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not really talking about the question of ownership, which, of course, we know uh, was what the proletariat and all that yeah. is about. 
those of us who've been students of Lenin for many years. Uh, uh, but no, no, that's, that's, no, see, that's not the point. It's not about the proletariat. It's not about the ownership of the business and property, but is it the fact that, hey, you need something? I got something. I'll help you. Uh, uh, it's kind of the same thing that the, the Baptists, right? The Baptists said, you got two cloaks? Well, give to the guy that only has, doesn't have any, right? You don't need two cloaks. So, so it's just that idea that we got everything. You need it. I'll share it with you. And this yeah. isn't rocket science, right? This, yeah. this is, it's so simple, yeah. but yet to live it out is so difficult. Oh, it's so hard. Because we are selfish people, right? And we do think... Because I need two cloaks. I have one black for my black and one brown for my brown. If I if I give you my brown cloak, what well, then doing? what am I going to do when I'm wearing my brown? You know? <laughs> You can go without it. No, that's no, the point. That's yeah, right. you're right. But that is the problem. I'm well, sorry. So, you want me to read on? Well, and I go, think go ahead. They're, they're one heart, they're one yeah. soul, so that, that certainly affects it. And then this idea that, that none of us said that any of the things they had that was their own. Oh, I think that's interesting. So, yeah. you know, who, whose was it then? Oh. Well, it's each other's, but who else's? It's not the proletariats or the capitalists or the government. It's God's. Yeah, see, I think that's yeah. part of it, too, that everything is not their own because it's from the Lord. Yeah. And if it's from the Lord and if it's a gift from him, well, then, yeah, don't be selfish with that gift. It's I'm beginning to think this with. communist stuff maybe isn't right. Maybe, <laughs> maybe Lenin around, didn't huh? have it right. Okay, all right, yeah. All right. But you're right, it's the ownership of the Lord. That, and that is, seriously, that is the difference with all these other systems. Whatever system you have, capitalism, communism, it all assumes that you own it. Yes. Uh, only Christianity suggests, no, you don't own any of it. It transcends any system, right? Any yeah. economic system. Right. Is, it's from the Lord. And if it's from the Lord, then hopefully we don't hang on to it quite as tightly. No. Right? Uh, it's a gift from the Lord, and as if we freely be given, we, we freely give. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Okay. You ready? Let's yep. go on to right. verse 33. Uh, and with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, yeah. and great grace was upon them all. And this, so here it is. You know, in this is centered in the resurrection, right? That's what they're giving testimony to. And their words, their actions, even in this case, their community is giving testimony to the resurrection. Of Jesus, yeah. Of Jesus. And that's their motivation, too. Their motivation is the resurrection, right? I, I think this is interesting. Great grace was upon them all. What do you think that, that phrase means? Great grace was upon them all. Well, I, I think it, you've kind of already illustrated that, that, that they've understood that everything they have is a gift. Yeah. Because that goes back to the whole possession. See, the reason we don't want to give the possessions up is because we really think we had a key element in getting those possessions. It was our hard work, our effort, our brains. Yeah, maybe, sure, I know religiously speaking it all came from God. But, no, we were kind of the intermediary there that made all this happen. But the great grace is that, oh, no, no, even the intermediary things we had were all his gift. And if he didn't give them to us, we would not have had any of that either. Yeah. So it's all, all, gift. all gift. And I think it even kind of alludes to that, that phrase that, that the great grace was upon that others take notice, too. Ah. That, and others, others take notice, maybe others even coming to faith because of what, what they see happening here. In this community that's been shaped by the resurrection. And, and did you see the light bulb go off there? It's, it's not as bright as it used to be. So people don't <laughs> often catch it right away. But, but see, there it is. It's all about the resurrection, isn't it? It's not about that we're really good people. Look at us. Look how nice we are. We're such kind, friendly people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, it's, it's that we've understood that there's a whole different reality going on that we really, because of now the resurrection of the dead. Yeah. That it's all about God and his grace and his gift of forgiveness. Oh, yeah. It's everything about him. Nothing about us. Changes everything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just as all, the, all we have is a gift in terms of sort of first article things, right? Yeah. You know, the things of this world. It's all a gift in terms of you know, second article things. Those, you know, those things that Christ gives to us. Yeah. 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 Okay, uh, well, uh, then it kind of explains even more. Uh, verse 34. Uh, there was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Um, you want me to stop well, there? I just think it's beautiful, yeah. too, that you know, people are the selling property, uh, and, and they're just laying at the disciples' feet, and, and they're distributing it to those who have need. And again, you know, this isn't th that difficult of a thing to do, but yet, you know, we hold on so tightly to what we have, and, and we think it's just our own, and, you know, to share here. I think that's a beautiful thing. Um, well, and I think it does point out to the sad thing, Matt, that, that this life-changing event happened just a few weeks ago on the first Sunday in April. But you're right, unfortunately, in our present-day church, it is like, okay, well, Easter's over. 
Uh, as a pastor, I'm thinking, wow, I'm glad that's done. <laughs> right, man. That was a lot of work. Yeah, that was a long 40 days. <laughs> yeah. uh, and for our people, too. Okay, yeah, well, go back now. Start planning for the summer and vacation and stuff. And uh, and that's a sad, sad thing because, obviously, it's not supposed to be that way. Yeah. There's a there's an article that got passed on to me by one of our members, uh, yeah. Tom, and he it's from the Wall Street Journal, and there's it's called the Easter Effect. I think ah. that's kind of neat. And the whole thing wrestles with this idea of how did this group of 120 people, you ah. know, at the Ascension, grow yeah. into you know over half the Roman Empire just a couple centuries later? Yeah. How does that take place? And the whole point is 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 this phrase he uses the Easter Effect, and so. He, he writes about how the Christians were just distinctly different than the rest of kind of the brutal first and second century cultures of yeah. the day. You know, that, that women were respected within Christianity, that they cared for the sick. They were ravaged by plagues, even not just their own sick as Christians, but but others, too. Um, you know, how they were martyrs willing to die for the faith and how all of this shows kind of this alternative way of life than from the distinctly different from the pagan culture around them. And people took notice of it. And when people did take notice of it, they had an answer for why they were different. It's because Jesus was raised from the dead. You know, it's because of the resurrection. Uh, and I, I thought that was pretty insightful, too, that, that today, too, that hopefully as Christians, we're a little different from those who aren't Christians. I hope we are. Uh, and hopefully people see that in our sharing and our care and compassion for one another and even for our enemy. And that when people ask us the reason for our love for others and love for them, we're ready with an answer. Jesus, right? <laughs> because Jesus lives, because Jesus loved enough to die and rise and live for me and for you. That changes me. And, and you know, now I'm going to give you my little editorial opinion here, because uh, actually, you know, a lot of people bemoan the fact that we're no longer the Christian nation that we were back in the 50s. I actually think that's a great thing. Well, I mean, it's not kind of a great thing that we're not a Christian. But I think as Christians, we kind of got co-opted. It was just being part of the culture. Yeah. People went to church because that's what you do in America, especially in the Midwest. And, and I'm glad. I'm glad to see that the, the culture is becoming more and more pagan because I think it was always was pagan. It just was a, a facade. And now, hopefully, we can show we really are different. Uh, my editorial comment, we're, we're struggling with this because I still think a lot of us fall into thinking the differences comes from morality, that we're going to have a different morality uh, than what the culture has. And, of course, we do have a different morality than what the culture has, but we have a different morality, like you said, not because we're more moral than the culture, but because Jesus Christ is risen. Uh, he suffered and died in love for us, and now he rose again to affirm that, and and that's what makes the difference. So we do what we do because we love as Christ loved us. Yes. And somehow we got to help people see that that's what makes the difference. Not that we got all these moral prescriptions, but no, there's a, well, you had it at the very beginning, right? One heart, right? Yes. One heart. We just, if there's somebody in need, we want to, because we love them. Like God loved us. He's given us all these things. Why wouldn't we want to be giving these things to the people who are in need? We're wrestling with it, but but I think through the power of the Holy Spirit, I think the church is going to be a stronger church than it's ever been uh, in the next uh, 20, 30 years. Yeah, I mean, I'm, my generation, I'm kind of right in between Gen X and the millennials yeah. there, and so which are you, Gen X or Millennial? Have you declared yourself I'm, I'm yet? Kind of in the, this but the census is no coming around. You're going to have to. Okay, oh, you're in the no man's land. I guess right. so. But but you know, most of what I do know is most of my peer, many of my peers are not going to church. It yep, is not that's just. What's happening. It is just not the thing. It's not. It's out of the norm to go to worship yep. on a Sunday morning. Yep. Most are not doing it. But those who do, boy, they take it seriously. That's the thing. You know, yes. they, they're sincere, and they're they, this. This is central to their life. Jesus Christ is at the center, and and you know, I think that's becoming the case more and more, uh, because you know, our, our the kids in our youth group, many of their kids, many of their friends, you know, friends, people at school, they're they're atheists. That's yep. that's the fastest growing group in that generation. Uh, so to go to church, they're doing something countercultural there to go to worship. And uh, it takes, you know, it takes some, some, some courage, really. Courage from the Lord, certainly, in his presence and his spirit, uh, but to come to worship and to be a little different. I was, you know, just to, to build off what you said, I was having uh, lunch with uh, Pastor uh, Dwayne Moss is the guy's name. He works with people of the book Lutheran Outreach, Pablo. Okay. So they yeah. reach out to, to Muslims here in America. And he was talking about how the, the most effective way they found to reach Muslims is just by, by 
simply showing them love. You know, yeah. Just by yeah. a sincere, genuine love that, that Christ calls us to do for our neighbor, whoever that neighbor is, even for our enemy, to, to just love. But, he continued, like you were saying, to, to make clear, especially when they ask, to make clear that the reason you're loving isn't just because you're a nice person or because it's the American thing to do. No, the reason you're loving is because of Jesus. Right. Because Jesus loved us first. And the reason you're loving is because you are a Christian, um, because Christ makes a difference in our life. Uh, he makes us a new person, a forgiven, a changed person. So it's it's not just loving, but it's giving witness to Christ as we have opportunity in the midst of love. He's the reason for it. And and, and that's possible to do when you understand that we are by nature jerks. <laughs> <laughs> we should put that in the confession. By nature, sinful and unclean and a and, jerk. And jerks. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, because seriously, when, when you comprehend and understand that, because, you know, as pastors, we get a lot of that, that people think, oh, you're just a nice guy. You're a pastor. And, and so I have to keep telling them, oh, you don't know me. Trust me. No, when <laughs> I get my a, wife. When I get, yeah, there you go. Ask my wife. Ask my children. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah when I get a phone call at two o'clock in the morning i don't jump up and say oh lord thank you i have an opportunity to serve people no i know exactly what i am (laughs) but that's what makes it so remarkable for me too where does this come from oh that's right it is the great grace that you refer to that's what it is it's not me that's not how it works but it is the fact that god loved me and now this whole thing he's he's alive he's alive in us matt yeah 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 so that that's a that's a good point that's a good point and that's the hard thing to do Uh, it's Seems to me in the church we we fall we always want to fall back either into morality that's what it is this is what's right and wrong or we fall back and well we're good and kind people and of course like you said no the whole thing oh it's Jesus uh, forgiveness yeah. of sins this is what it's all about his grace his resurrection amen so in our witness this is an important example of the resurrection motivating yeah. that witness the other thing I think uh, from from this group of verses is the the community picture there you know, that it's it, it, the church you know, is the best community around. You know, yeah. uh, Mark Zuckerberg is in the news all over the place because of Facebook stuff now, but he made some kind of comment not too long ago about comparing Facebook to a church because yeah. of the community it creates with people. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah, there's community on Facebook. You're friends with these people, but, you know, you may have never even met them. You know, maybe you have a common interest in a certain restaurant you like to go to or whatever, you become friends. But Ted Drews. Ted, well, that is a pretty <laughs> strong bond. <Yeah>. But, <laughs> but in the church, you know, we're not just friends. I mean, we are family through baptism. Brothers and sisters in Christ, and that that bond is stronger. That bond of faith, focused on Christ, is stronger than any club or organization or Facebook post or anything else. Uh, if you want community, you know, look to the church. I mean, yeah. we 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 weep together, we rejoice together, we share together, uh, all in the name of Christ. And uh, you know, if you're out there looking for a community, you know, don't just stop at Facebook. You know, uh, look to the church, look to that community of of fellow Christians. So thank you, Matt. Yeah. Thank you for pointing You're out welcome. the. Uh, you know we're not going to uh, have time for it, and we don't okay. need we don't need to do it next week. But you know, for okay. our, for our listeners, lest you think the church was perfect back in the Book of Acts. Oh, I was thinking the, about the, that. The, the yeah. very next account yep. is yep. this Ananias and Sapphira stuff. Uh, one of my ten year old daughter's favorite accounts, by the way, because she likes the gory stuff in the Bible. Yeah. Uh, read on and see what happens there, because no, no, these early Christians. They weren't perfect. The church wasn't perfect. Never, never was, never will be until Christ returns. Um, so look up that example. Not everyone is freely sharing all that they have all the time. Uh, but again, uh, by God's grace, there's there's even forgiveness for that. So, well, yeah, we can't read it. We or, can't read it, no, but just no the challenge to our listeners. But it is interesting. Yeah. yeah, you go ahead. And the very next verse is about how the Ananias comes and sold a piece of property and claims that they're giving it to the church. But no, nope, no, kept not. most of it back yeah. for themselves. Yeah, so he drops um, dead. There you <laughs> so, go. Okay, end yeah. of story. <laughs> <laughs> what a nice way to end this, this week's episode. Now, thank you for leaving us on that uplifting <laughs> thought. <laughs> happy Easter, everyone. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, but it is a happy Easter because Jesus Christ is is alive. That's right. He is alive indeed. Hallelujah.